In the last stream, we began our journey stranded in the middle of the desert with nothing but the quest book available to us, and we managed to get a fairly decent little base going here. We've got a lot of cactus, we've got a couple of furnaces, we have most importantly the extractinator here, which now allows us to make coal, clay, iron, copper, and apparently quite importantly, lapis. I say quite importantly, because right now you may notice that our little temperature orb in the center down here between our health and our hunger is getting a little hot. The reason for that is that our cactus boots broke at the end of the last episode, and the rest of the armor is also pretty close to breaking. Now we could of course make more. We do have a fair bit of cactus around here. We could tear a lot of this down, make a new set of armor, and keep going about our day, but the cactus armor is not particularly good in the first place when it comes to being armor, and it does break quite quickly. And the Twitch chat has just told me that we can actually make lapis armor here, which you'll see also has that cooling effect whilst also being substantially better as actual armor. The lapis chestplate, for example, gives us plus six armor, whereas the cactus poncho gives us just plus one armor. And so, Real quick here, we do have a decent amount of lapis available to us, and of course, we can make more using more of the deep slate, which hopefully we're going to look at automating at some point in the coming episodes. But uh, we can just do something like this, and of course, like this, and then finally, like this, and we get a full set of lapis armor, which should continue to cool us from the sun and should also hopefully give us a bit more protection when it comes to fighting hostile mobs, which hopefully we won't have to do quite as often now that we have our bed here, but looking at this next section of the quest book, I do think we are going to have to fight a couple of blazers today because I believe that is how we're going to get lava. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, the next quest here wants us to make a squeezer. For this, we need a block of iron, an iron ingot, and then some more wood. Currently, we do have 11 iron in our blast furnace, and that appears to be all of the iron that we have. That is Completely fine. We do have a lot more terracotta here and a decent amount of deep slate that has been smelted. And so what I might do real quick is distribute the remaining deep slate here amongst the three furnaces that we have just to get that smelting as well. And then to free up some space in this chest, I think it's also probably worthwhile us dumping a lot of the terracotta that we have into the extractinator so we can start to turn all of that terracotta into a copper, coal, and clay. We do have what it takes though to make one iron block and of course the uh, spare iron ingot there to make the squeezer. And the good news is that I can see right here that we're very close to being able to get samplings. And once we get samplings, I think that's really gonna open up the ability for us to get a lot more wood, which makes it easier for us to get more chests and you know more sticks, all that kind of stuff is not nearly as difficult. We don't have to use cactus for everything. And I think it's also gonna make it a little easier for us to build uh, maybe a slightly more unified base than this kind of hazard array of cactus and cobblestone wall that we currently have. Speaking of things we currently have though, we do not currently have any wood. And so I do think that we are gonna have to quickly go around and gather a little bit of cactus from our cactus farm here. If we do something like that, that should get us quite a bit of cactus, but you do run the risk of losing a lot of it, which is not ideal really. We got three, which is gonna get us enough wood to make the squeezer if we get a few more sticks here but uh yeah we could definitely do with maybe using the shovel technique and just tearing down the entire cactus it's definitely not as quick it's gonna take a little longer but from a cactus efficiency standpoint you just get a lot more cactus if you uh break it like that and then just replant the bottom one i think that's definitely the way we want to go at least in the early game however one other thing i do want to uh, kind of put on the to-do list is i do want to look at actually farming those cactus chickens i've done a little bit of research between episodes and i'm now aware of how we can actually utilize these resourceful chickens to uh, to actually get things like cactus and uh, wood and leather and silicon all that kind of stuff and so we could definitely do with uh, looking at that sooner rather than later for now though we have the squeezer and essentially we can use this to make water and lava i'm going to bookmark both of those the water is pretty straightforward we place down the squeezer we place in some cactus and we can squeeze that cactus to get water alongside green dye the lava is a little trickier. It's the same mechanic, but we require blaze powder. And if we're going to get one full bucket of lava, we need four blaze powder in total, which should be very doable. They should be blaze over in the Badlands. We've not seen any so far, but we've also kind of kept to the very edge 
of the Badlands biome to try and avoid finding any of those hostile mobs. But now that we have the uh, slightly improved armor, I'm hoping that uh, that won't really be a problem for us going forward. I definitely should get this uh, iron smelting up here. If we want to use the squeezer though, we do need this basic portable tank first. For that, we need one bucket and then four extra iron. We did make a bucket in the last episode. And in fact, we are one iron away here from the four iron required. On top of that, we do also need to get ourselves four glass pans. Currently, we have one piece of glass, but of course, we do have a ton of sand available to us and a little bit more sand available in the world around us. And so getting six glass for the six glass pans here should be pretty straightforward. And not too much glass smelting later, we now have enough to make 16 glass pans. And of course, with that, we should have everything that we need to make our tank just as soon as we grab that iron and boom, nice. So if we place the squeezer down, and again, we could really do with more space at this point in time, but let's say we place it down here and we place the tank next to it. As it says in the quest book here, it says can be used to squeeze items into other items and fluids. Fluids get auto outputted into adjacent tanks. So you can put it anywhere around the squeezer. And once you have it down, all you need to do is grab some cactus, place that cactus into the squeezer like so. And then from there, you need to jump on the squeezer because this is a manual squeezer, not a automatic squeezer. Later on, we can look at getting an electric mechanical squeezer here that will do it with uh, energy, but right now we don't have any. So we just jump on this until it hits the bottom. And then once it hits the bottom, it produces 500 millibuckets of water and some green dye. And then if you want to reset the squeezer, that is where a lever is required. You make a lever, you put that lever next to the squeezer, you right click it like so, and that should reset it. It does reset it, but I also noticed that there's still 500 millibuckets of water in the tank. It's quite possible that the tank actually might need to go. I said earlier, it doesn't matter where you put it, but I think it might need to go either here or here. You'll see these little uh, kind of divots where the water can flow. So I think if I put it here, that does indeed flow in. Okay, so ignore what I said earlier. It does matter what side you put it on, uh, but you've got a 50-50 chance to get it right first time anyway. So let's do one more. That gets us a full bucket of water and... We don't have enough iron to make another bucket just yet, but of course we do have all of the deep slate here. And so if we uh, wanted to, we could take all of the coal and copper out of here. We could also do a quick one of not those. I guess we can't right click on it whilst it's got other stuff in it. So if I temporarily take that terracotta out, we can hopefully speed up what's in there and then use the, uh, the deep slate to get a bunch more iron very quickly. And of course, the faster you click here, the faster it's gonna work through it. And then we can take that iron out uh, well, the iron's gonna come out slowly, I guess, but once the iron comes out, we can put it in, smelt it up, get another bucket. And I think ideally here, we want to get two buckets worth of water so we can make an unlimited water source. And then from there, I am fairly certain that we should be able to use our canteen here as a way of carrying around more water than we're currently able to. Let's give that a try. Let's see if we can make that work. Real quick, let me drop the iron in there so we can get the required iron to make a bucket. Over here, we're gonna do two more drops of cactus. That's number one and two. Fantastic, reset this. Over here, there is exactly three iron. Fantastic, one, two, and three. Let's take out this. I'm hopeful that we can in fact make an unlimited water source. It's possible that if we put this down, it might just evaporate instantly. It does not, fantastic. That is good to see. And so now if I take my canteen, can I just right click that on here? I totally can and this can maybe hold a fair bit of water. I actually don't know how much water this can hold, if it's actually holding any amount of water or not. I also then do wonder, can I like cook the water? I can't cook the water, interesting. I've got no idea how much water this canteen holds. Oh, a fair bit, I guess. So we can right click and it looks like we've maybe used like one of five uses potentially. So it kind of takes up the, uh, the space of five water bottles. Potentially, I'm thinking a guess at five, it might be four or six, but that looks to be about right. Interesting. There is also a canteen option for the purified water, but I don't see a way to actually get that. There's no recipe for it. Um, although I guess if we can get some purified water and place it down, I assume that's how that works. Also, it does appear that we have a, oh, we have uh, friends. Hello, my friends. Nothing to see here. Don't you worry about a thing. You guys just stay over there. You do your thing and, uh, and everything's gonna be fine. One thing we did just uh, notice with the uh, Twitch chat is that the Lapis Sword is definitely a worthwhile upgrade here. It's better than an Iron Sword and also fairly cheap. The Stone Sword here has five attack damage, an Iron Sword has six, and then this Lapis Sword here 
here's seven. So I guess we um we're gonna need to try and kind of take care of these these jabronis here. They uh they shouldn't be too difficult to take care of. We do have a decent amount of food, and there's only two of them. I don't know if we'll get any kind of bow or crossbow from this guy. We didn't. We got a uh, a flag, which I guess we can put down as a, a deterrent to the future future uh, bad guys. Okay, cool. Let me uh, let me come back around here and uh, let's drop some stuff into this chest. Specifically, to be fair, I don't think our cactus armor is worth keeping. We do have this little trash can at the top left. So in your inventory, you can click this and uh, you can just put items in here. And as soon as you close this, those items will be deleted. So those are now gone. If we check back at the trash can, they're no longer there. Just a quick and easy way of getting rid of stuff without having to throw things onto the floor over and over again. And like I said, I don't think we're going to need it. I think if we wanted to get more armor, we'd probably just make more lapis armor going forward. Now that that's done, though, let's check in here. I think really the next thing we need to do is get this lava bucket. That is going to allow us to make the resource generator too, which is going to allow us to produce an unlimited amount of things like stone. And I guess more importantly, uh, deep slate or cobbled deep slate, because we can then use that, of course, to automate the production of things like lapis and iron. So... To get that, we need the lava bucket. For the lava bucket, we need some blaze powder. We also need to get this drying table if we want to get samplings, and that drying table does require two strings. So I think what we should almost certainly do here is maybe make another chest so we don't have to carry all of this junk with us. We should probably head back over to the Badlands, and we should see if we can't get two more string. And while we're over there, see if we can't fight a couple of blazers as well. If we're going to fight some blazers, it might not be a terrible idea for us to get a bow and maybe some arrows as well. The bow does require string though, which again, we don't currently have the ability to make. We don't have any string left over from before. Arrows are easy because we do have feathers and I believe we can make flint because I'm fairly certain that we can squish cobblestone into gravel and then we can squish gravel into flint. So flint is not too difficult to come by. Gravel on the other hand is, uh, is a little trickier. We could also potentially just try and kill a couple of spiders here in the evening to get some string that would allow us to make the strainer right here the drying table as well as potentially a bow and a couple of arrows as well which i think would be useful for fighting blazers because we're still not particularly strong so i'm going to take a quick look around see if we can't find some spiders to kill see if we can't get maybe five string and then we could potentially after that take a look at uh at going and fighting some blazers hello my friend could you perchance provide me with some string you could that's two and so we really only need to fight potentially two more chickens also a glass chicken over there as well which is interesting speaking of chickens i was talking before about being able to uh to work with those chickens if we want to work with those chickens we need a um i think it's an animal net or maybe a catcher it's in the quest book it's up here we need an animal capture net which is even more string so kind of five more string there for the animal capture net so we could definitely do with a decent amount of string Okay, so a couple of spiders later, we killed uh, two cave spiders and uh, one regular spider, although there is one over there as well. We got five string. Five string is all we need to get started now. Oh, he's across the uh, the cavern there. So we'll, we'll leave him for the time being. So with five string, we do now have what it takes to make a bow, which I think is going to be a good investment for fighting the blazers. We also do have what it takes to make a couple of arrows as well. We are going to need some more cactus, but again, we do have a decent amount of cactus grown around us. Let's quickly harvest some more of these. Fantastic. We'll replant, of course, two of those here and here. Good stuff. And then back over here, let's craft up some more planks, some more sticks, and some arrows. We do need that flint that we made a second ago, and it's probably not a terrible idea for us to make a few more sets of that. So I think what I'll do quickly here is take a couple of pieces of cobblestone and uh, just quickly crush those down into yet more flint. I think we're guaranteed one piece of flint per cobblestone. And I think there's like a 50% chance, maybe lower, of getting a second piece of flint with every gravel that we squeeze. Yeah, 50% chance. Nice. And so, in fact, I think one more piece of cobblestone here will probably get us a decent amount of flint. And the Twitch chat is also recommending that we potentially make a shield as well so that we can block the projectile attacks from the blazers, which I think is probably also not a terrible idea. For a shield here, we need one iron and just some planks. Planks-wise, we are still uh, surprisingly low, but again, we can get yet more planks from our cactus, and hopefully, before the end of today's episode, we're also going to be able to get uh, more planks just from saplings as well, which should be fairly straightforward. I don't think we have the modded... Also, we should sleep 
here real quick before we get attacked by another magic zombie like last episode. But I don't believe we have the mod in that lets us shift to grow trees, but I do notice that there's a sapling grower in the uh, recommended items section of the quest book. So that's probably something we should look towards once we have a couple of saplings ready to go. And I guess we're ready. I don't know if blazers are, um, are going to spawn during the day in the Badlands. I would assume that they will, but it's quite possible that they won't. But I think that's also kind of fun. Uh, let me make sure that my canteen is full up and let's head on out, shall we? To the Badlands. All right, so a bank over by the Badlands. It is a very small little Badlands biome, as you can see on the mini map there. There is also this little temple here that I'm a little concerned about because I don't know what's in it. What I do notice though, is a lot of these bone blocks, which I will steal because as we saw a second ago, that is required for the uh, sampling grower. And so that could be useful. I might also take these, uh, I guess we can come back for these if we need them. There aren't any mob spawners in here. I was under the impression there might be a few mob spawners in here ready to, uh, to attack us. I also don't really know if we're gonna need this rotten flesh. We might be able to strain it into leather, but apparently not. Although maybe actually, I think we can craft the rotten flesh into bundled flesh. And then yes, we can put that on the drying table that we're about to make to, uh, to get leather as well. Interesting. There are possibly traps, but I don't see any tripwires or anything, so I think we might be okay. We've got a surprising number of, uh, of enderpearls for how early on we are in the pack here. Um, I'm not really too bothered about the water bottles. I'm also not really too bothered about the uh, the sand or the wooden tools. The rotten flesh is really just useful here as a means of getting leather, I think. It's possible we might need some in the future, but for the most part, I don't really think we need too much of it. I guess I might as well take the torches. I've got the inventory space, and um, I don't really think we need the zombie heads either, but I've not seen a single blaze. Um, that could be to do with the fact that it's not nightfall. I do, however, see a village in the distance, and the village is actually gonna be quite useful for us, because if we want to do any kind of work with the resourceful chickens, we do need to get wheat seeds because we need seeds that we can give to the chickens to breed them and the way that the mod works we also need seeds as uh, like an automatic way to get resources and so uh, we could do with seeing if they have like a little wheat farm somewhere around here which i'm almost certain they will do and if they do we could do with like kind of pillaging all of that wheat to oh we do have bad omen that's my that's true i completely forgot i don't want to take part in a raid um that's that's not ideal i mean could we, uh, could we quickly try and steal some stuff before we leave? Are they gonna chase us? <laughs> I've not done this. Hold on. I just need like a couple of wheat seeds is all. That's all I'm after. Just some, some seeds. There's an iron golem here. He'll protect me, right? There's a lot of wheat over there as well. That wheat could be incredibly useful for chickens. I'm gonna quickly go and try and steal the, uh, the hay bales over here. And then, and then we'll leave. I also completely forgot that we had the, um, the bad omen. That is uh, is an attack on us that I do not want to see. Um, real quick, I'm gonna run. <laughs> We've got, I think, enough wheat, and I, I I think we can come back, right? If we leave, I think the uh, the the raid will end. I'm gonna head back. Oh, there's another Badlands biome over there as well, which we could potentially head towards if we um if we do need. Gosh, are the villagers all gonna die? Do I need to be the savior? Hello, my friends. I got this. Don't you worry. Aren't there like multiple waves of the raid? Like if I kill this one set, it's not gonna just end, right? Right, yeah, they kind of just like keep keep coming. And it gets like harder and harder, right? <laughs> Which is not what I want. I don't want to uh, to fight a harder and harder level of uh, bad guys. There's some more cactus chickens. I think we might just have to wait for night to fall here, chat. And, uh, and once night falls, we can take a look and see if... Um, See if any blazers spawn here. If they don't, we can always head over to that nearby Badlands section. Oh no, I do see a blaze on the map actually. Right, uh, right here, which is like over in that direction. I don't see him. I'm gonna head down, and we'll see if we can find him. So according to the mini map, our blaze friend is right here. He is. Okay, hello. That's not too bad. We got one blaze rod. We can squeeze one blaze rod into exactly four blaze powder. That is actually fantastic. So we actually don't need to kill any more blazers. We could, of course, come back if we uh, do need to get more lava. 
But people in the Twitch chat have also pointed out that if we uh, press M and up on our map here, there are a couple of pools of lava, or what appear to be pools of lava, on the surface in the desert as well. And so it's quite possible we could just hit those up if we want to get more lava going forward. For now, though, let's head back to our uh, waypoint, because our base is right next to that crude oil, and uh, let's get making our first bucket of lava. All right, so back at base, we again have way too much stuff in our inventory, but we should now be able to take our blaze rod, drop that into our squeezer, like so, and if J.I. is to be believed here, we should have a 100% chance to get four blaze powder. Nice. And then with that, we can just put that back into the squeezer a second time here, and this should get us our first bucket of lava, which we can then use to, uh, to make ourselves the resource generator Mark II. And with the two extra string we've got, we can also take a look at getting the drying rack as well, which I keep calling the drying rack. It's actually called the drying table. So here's our last blaze powder. Let's squeeze it down. And boom, nice. Okay, so we can take this out. Fantastic. That does have a heating effect. So temporarily, I'm going to drop it into our chest there. We do need to get another bucket here in order to grab another bucket of water. We also need to sleep real quick so as not to uh, get killed by wizard zombies in our sleep. And I'll also throw down another ominous banner here. We've got two of them. I might as well make the base symmetrical. We'll place it down, let's say, right about here. Fantastic. And then back inside, we should now have everything that we need in order to make the resource generator two. We do. We just need that lava bucket we placed away. And boom, we should get the buckets back. We do indeed. Fantastic. And this is a super cool block in that it allows us to generate a ton of different stuff. The main thing I think initially that we want to generate is this cobbled deep slate. I'm fairly certain you can't generate regular deep slate, although you might actually be able to. If we can generate regular deep slate, that is going to be very powerful. Let's give this a try. In order to utilize this to its fullest, we could definitely do with a chest. I do believe we also have the storage drawer mod installed as well, but the storage drawers are, um, are a little bit more expensive on the wood front. And again, until we get samplings, that's maybe something we should hold off on. Although at the same time, I think we now have everything we need to make samplings, right? If we want to get the drying table, this requires just some sticks and some string, which we have. We can then place that down, let's say right about here. And then using that, we can now make mossy stone by putting regular stone into the drying table like this. And that's going to slowly but surely, very slowly, but very surely over the course of the next 10 seconds. Actually, that's not that slow at all. I thought it was going to take way longer. Oh, this might need to go in the water, actually. I think this might need to be waterlogged if we want this to work. Let me break this, drop it in here. That might work. And then if we put this in, that doesn't work. Hold on. I might have to put the water down after the drying rack. It does say soaking table. Is that a different? That's not a different thing. It's definitely the same thing. If I do this and this and this, yes. Okay, so you can shift right click to put it in. And now it's a soaking table on the top left there. Okay, perfect. So now we can put our stone in. Then it's going to begin transforming the stone into this mossy stone. And then with that mossy stone, we can then finally look at getting these moss balls. The moss balls are, I think, just made by breaking the mossy stone. They are indeed. Look at that. Fantastic. And then we can craft the mossy balls with dead bushes in order to get samplings. I assume that we have to get a pair of shears in order to pick up a dead bush without it becoming sticks. So if we do this, we get a dead bush. Fantastic. And then we do need to get six more moss balls to make this happen. I think I put five stone into the soaking table here. I did. So we've got four more, but we do need to get one more on top of that to make this happen. I do wonder if we can put colored stone in and if that works. It does not. That would have been far too easy. Fine. In that case, let's just throw some cobblestone into here. Let that smelt up. While that's smelting up, let's quickly go ahead and do something like this. One, two, three, and four. Break all of that with our pickaxes. Oh, we get more than one sometimes. Fantastic. Never mind. In that case, chat, we finally have what it takes to make a sampling. And although we don't have dirt, it does say in the quest book here that we can grow these samplings on moss blocks, which I believe we can make by crafting four moss together. And now if we go boom and 
boom, we can begin growing trees. Now, I don't believe that we can shift for them. We can't. And so by default, it's going to take however long a normal sampling takes to grow. However, as we saw earlier, the sampling grower could be the answer. And given that we do have all of the bone blocks required here, we should potentially be able to just right click this. And look at that, we have a tree, fantastic. Okay, that makes it incredibly easy for us to get trees. And of course, we can then go ahead and use our Ultimine key here to tear down the entire tree. Then we'll get us more samplings. We could, of course, craft more samplings as well. I don't think we have anything like a crook. Actually, never mind, we totally do have a crook. Look at that, Ben has added that to his Opolis Utilities mod there. That's very interesting because ideally the crook is going to give us more leaves, uh, more, more samplings, sorry, than we would normally get. And it totally did. Normally you do not get eight samplings from a tree. That is incredibly useful. And of course we can tear this down for the wood as well. Fantastic. Now that we have the wood, we can uh, quite easily make a chest. And then from there we can actually make a storage door. As you can see, quite expensive on the planks front, but now that we have the ability to grow really as many trees as we like, and especially given that we can utilize our tree grower, which seems to not have a durability, which is interesting, like it just kind of works. That's very good. Um, but also what we can do here, by the way, is we can take our shears, we can shear the leaves to get leaves, and then we can take those leaves to make dirt, which is very useful for planting more samplings going forward, and also for growing more wheat and getting more wheat seeds as well, which is also going to be useful for our chickens. On top of that, we can use the leaves here to make leafy string. And then we can use that leafy string, I believe, to make green wool. So if we take, for example, eight here, we can then craft two green wool. And again, I've got no inventory space because I made one too many. Let me put one of these in the trash can. If we make two green wool, we can then use that green wool in the squeezer to get regular string. It's a bit of a roundabout setup. But unfortunately, the leafy string can't be used in most recipes, but the green wool here can be turned into regular string, and the regular string can be used in any recipe. And so we do now have basically a way of making really as much string as we like, which is going to be very useful going forward for making more arrows, for making any more bows we want to make, or just for completing any more quests that we want. And so now that we have the storage drawer, let's see about actually getting this resource generator up and running. So the way this works we are very light on space let's put down our storage drawer let's say here above that goes the resource generator mark ii and then above that i believe is where we put the block we want to generate so if we wanted to generate deep slate we would place that deep slate here and you'll know it's working when it turns blue and you'll see that we're now just producing deep slate which is incredibly useful and in fact what we can almost certainly do here is we can go ahead and we can take this draw, which I believe will retain its inventory when you break it. Totally does. We can, uh, never mind, it totally doesn't. So do be careful of that. If your drawer is full and you break it, it will drop a lot of items. For those who don't know, by the way, this draw can hold 32 stacks of one item, which equates to uh, 2,048 of an, a normal item that can stack to 64. But essentially, if we do not this, wait, no, it did hold up. Wait, am I wrong? It does have one deep slate in there, but we also got an extra deep slate. I'm not quite sure where this deep slate came from, but uh, if we do, oh, this is the one we broke. That's my bad. Never mind. It does retain its inventory. If we do this and this, and then if we go all the way up to here and put the deep slate on top, that should now produce deep slate automatically, place that deep slate into this draw automatically. That deep slate is then pulled out by the iron hopper, placed into the extractinator, and then that extractinator is going to turn it automatically into lapis and iron. And so with that, we've effectively automated the production of lapis and iron. And if we wanted to take this one step further, we could go ahead and get a little bit more wood. We should definitely invest in a better X to make tree chopping just a little bit faster. But if we quickly get some more wood here, what we should be able to do is craft yet another storage drawer. This time around though, I'm gonna go ahead and craft two chests because I want to get a storage drawer that can hold two items. That being this one right here, the one by two drawer. With this, we could put that down, let's say right about here. And the idea with this is that we could then, uh, also can I do, this totally can't fantastic i need another chest to go down here just to give me some inventory space my thought process over here though is that uh, we can go ahead uh, pick up this hopper 
we can place lapis and iron into here. So now, unlike this draw that can hold 2,048 of any one item, this can hold 1,024 of two items. So it can hold half as much of each item, but it can hold twice as many items. But essentially now, if we replace that hopper down pointing into the draw, like so, we have now fully automated the production of lapis and raw iron because the resource generator up here is going to keep producing the deep slate. This is going to keep burning that deep slate, processing it, crushing it into lapis and iron, and this draw is going to just store all of the lapis and iron that we make. Now, we can make the resource generator faster by adding a cap to the top of the current setup. If you press U on the resource generator in JEI, it's under speed blocks here. So these are all of the blocks that you can place on top of the setup to make it faster. Right now, it, uh, it's producing deep slate and it's producing one every 220 ticks. There are 20 ticks per second in Minecraft and so it takes 11 seconds to produce one deep slate. If we wanted to make that faster, we could add one of these blocks. And uh, if you hover over the blocks, it tells you how many ticks that blocks takes. So if we were to place a block of energetic alloy on top of this setup, it would go down from 220 ticks to 60 ticks. However, unfortunately, we uh, don't have what it takes to make that. However, we do have what it takes to make a block of iron. And the block of iron is going to be fairly easy for us to make. And it takes it down to 120 ticks, essentially making it almost twice as fast. There is also lapis as well, which is not quite as good, 120 ticks. Uh, we do have one emerald, but not quite enough to make a block's worth. And we are about to unlock the ability to make redstone in the next section of the quest book here. But I think for now, if we have nine iron, which we do, we can then do something like this, take the iron out, throw that on top of this entire setup, which is going to be uh, easier said than done, given how high it is in the, uh, the sky now. But if we do something like this, we should now be able to uh, right click once again on the tier two resource generator. And now instead of 220 ticks, it takes 120. And so now instead of taking 11 seconds, it's going to take six, which is almost twice as fast. Of course, ideally here, at some point, we'd want to automate the uh, smelting of the iron, which is probably not too difficult to do, but right now we don't really have an automated fuel source. And so I don't know if that's gonna be super easy to set up in a way that's actually fully automated. What we can do though, is we can potentially complete this quest line here. So. The next quest wants us to make a mineral sampling. This requires two buckets of water, one sampling, and then six moss balls. Six moss balls should be pretty straightforward. Let me quickly get this uh, cobblestone smelting up so we can get more stone to put in here and create more mossy stone. Uh, we do currently have one moss ball ready to go. We also do have the sampling ready to go as well. As for two buckets of water, we can grab those very easily. Boom and boom. Speaking of water, let me quickly take a sip of my canteen, which does have a non-zero chance to give us thirst, which is not ideal, but it is substantially more convenient than carrying around multiple water bottles with us. And how are you doing? You are done. If we're lucky, we might get enough moss balls from this. We totally did, fantastic. And so we actually might have what it takes to make this mineral sampling. This is from Integrated Dynamics, and hopefully with this, we should be able to grow a mineral tree. Again, utilizing, ideally, the, whoops, the sampling grower. Although it would appear that the, uh, the beta sampling grower does not work on mineral samplings. Interesting. I do wonder if we can utilize some of the bone blocks that we have here to potentially grow this with bone meal. Well, maybe. Oh, apparently the mineral requires extra dirt. I see. Okay, real quick then. Let's try something like this. Let's get a few more dirt blocks. We might even need like five dirt blocks. I remember this being quite big. Let's, for now, go ahead and uh, plant another sampling. Let's get some more leaves so we can make some more dirt. So if we do this, fantastic. It's also probably worth getting like a lapis X. Again, we could make an iron X, but I think the lapis X is just as good, if not better. And the lapis is just easier for us to make, and it is coming in automatically, which is uh, is perfect. So let's do another one of these. We do want to make sure that we don't ever run out of samplings. We could, of course, make more should we need to, but I think in an ideal world, we want to make sure we always have at least some samplings lying around. And then once we got some more dirt, let's try this. Does the sampling grower work? It does. Okay, apologies, uh, Ben. You were right. I was wrong. It does work. <laughs> and with this, we get some mineral leaves and we get mineral logs. The mineral logs here are what we're after. And so 
I am going to once again try utilizing a crook here. Again, wood is substantially easier for us to get now, so it doesn't really matter too much if we uh, if we waste a couple of sticks. But I do want to know if we get more saplings from the mineral tree utilizing this. I think we totally do. I think that's way more berries and saplings than you would normally get. I'm very happy about that. And from there, we can go ahead, tear down the rest of the tree. Annoyingly, didn't quite get all of it. That's fine. We can uh, clean up the last little dregs of mineral wood here using our lapis inks. And we should now be able to use the squeezer, I believe, to squeeze these mineral logs and in turn produce this uh, mineral resin. Let me uh, quickly check mineral resin in JEI. We need, yes, one mineral log to get one bucket of mineral resin. The squeezer here is actually from Integrated Dynamics. So this is what it's intended to do. All of the other stuff is kind of um, just additional recipe additions. But uh, now we should be able to do this and this. Nice. And I believe this mineral resin is going to be useful for us going forward, specifically in the next section of the quest book, which is where we are going to unlock strainers. And then we need to use the uh, mineral resin here to produce things like the uh, crystallized mineral chunks, which are then going to allow us to push further on into integrated dynamics, actually get some kind of uh, power generation up and running, which is useful, and also potentially look at getting a mechanical squeezer that runs off energy and uh, also unlock things like redstone and some pipes as well, which are going to allow us to uh, distribute items quite nicely in a much more efficient way than we're currently doing with the hoppers. Real quick here, in order to finish the squeezer quest line, there is a flopper, which is um, an abbreviation of fluid hopper. It says like a hopper, but for fluids. I don't know necessarily what we're going to need the fluid hopper for, and I'm actually not too sure what the recipe is like on the fluid hopper either, but uh, let's take a look in JEI. It is a bucket and three iron. Easy enough, boom, one, two, three. Boom. And so now if we wanted to, we could uh, move, you know, fluids from this tank into a different tank, or we could uh, pump from the squeezer into a, into a portable tank using the flopper here. That might become useful later on, especially with the uh, the strainers here. Once we get those up and running, I think there's a possibility that we could potentially make use of the floppers. Now that we have uh, the ability to make basically unlimited string, let's see if we can't get the animal capture net. We need five string to make that happen. We did just use the entirety of our leaf supply making dirt. That is fine though. We do have more samplings available to us. And so if we very quickly do one of these, one of these, and one of these, we can uh, get a decent amount of string if we uh, do in fact break this tree because the leaves are stuck up there. Perfect, as well as quite a lot of saplings and a few apples as well, which could be uh, useful food-wise. Speaking of food, let me uh, also grab some of the bread from my storage system, which is currently a little haphazard. We could definitely do with uh, organizing this and making it look a little bit nicer. But uh, once we're fully fed up here, we should be able to repeat the process of making leafy string, crafting that leafy string into green wool, and then squeezing that green wool over in, oops, you gotta right click that twice, I always forget, into here. In order to get regular string, one green wall here should do the trick. It did indeed, that gets us five string, and with five string we can make the animal catcher. And so now what we should be able to do is head on out into the world and begin capturing chickens, and ideally bringing those chickens back and storing them. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and make like a little fenced off area to store the chickens in. Don't worry, chat, they're still going to be free range chickens. They're just going to be free range chickens that are somewhat held captive inside of a fenced off ringed area, okay? So if we just quickly do something like this, this is mostly to stop them re-escaping. We can then take our animal capture net, and the idea here is that if we can find a single chicken, I can't help but notice that they all seem to have disappeared as soon as, um, as, soon as we get our, our net out. But if we can find a chicken, we should be able to just right click onto that chicken, like so, give it a quick swipe, and then now back at home, we can then just deposit that chicken into this little nested area, like so. And what we'll do next time, chat, is we'll come back and we'll look at uh, utilizing the uh, resource chickens mod to actually get some resources out of this guy. And we can do the same thing with every chicken that we have. It actually probably won't be a bad idea for us to invest in a couple of these animal capture nets. These do have a durability, unlike uh, some other stuff that we've worked with today. And obviously we are gonna have to go quite far afield to get some of these chickens, and we are probably going to want a few of them, 
because we can uh, also breed them together to make more efficient and better chickens. Right now, uh, this has growth one, gain one, and strength one. Again, we'll come to that uh, later in the series. But essentially, if we go ahead and get a couple of capture nets, we can head on out into the desert and come back with multiple chickens at once, as opposed to having to go out, grab one chicken, come back, go out, grab one chicken, come back, and kind of repeat that process over and over again. All right, so we now have enough to make at least three more animal catchers. And I guess, actually, if we uh, make a couple more sticks here, we should have what it takes to make a, uh, a couple more nets as well. Perfect. So that's many nets for us. Let me uh, clear my inventory out just a bit. Make sure, of course, that I have my canteen on me at all times. We don't want to lose that. And yeah, now we should be able to head on out into the world, grab really as many chickens as we like, and then bring those chickens back to store inside of our little pen here. Right now, we have access to cactus chickens, which are useful. Not all the chickens, I think, are going to be super useful to us. Cactus chickens are. Sand chickens, I don't think so as much. The same with glass. And, and then even leather chickens, I don't think any of those are particularly useful at the minute, although they could be in the future. Clay chickens could be very useful. They could help us with the production of terracotta. Blaze chickens, also quite useful. We'd have to fight blazes. Guest and silicon chickens, not particularly useful right now, but I think silicon is going to be useful when we start working with applied energistics. And then bone chickens could also be useful for growing potentially the seeds faster. If we get bone meal from that, that could be quite useful. And yeah, I think that's kind of about it. We can also breed the chickens together and we can also like kind of force chickens to become other chickens. Well, again, well, that's something we can look at in the future. I also don't know if it's particularly useful to us, but I think for the most part, we, um, you know, we could get a lot of cactus chickens. I don't really know if we need that many cactus chickens now though, because the thing about cactus chickens is that they are, they were useful until we got our uh, samplings. But now that we have our samplings, I don't really know if the uh, if the cactus chickens are all that useful. And so it might not even be that useful to us. One thing that could be useful to us is potentially getting a regular chicken because you can turn regular chickens into other chickens by feeding them a certain resource. For example, I believe we can take a regular chicken and turn it into a coal chicken, at which point we would then be able to utilize that chicken to produce an unlimited amount of coal, and then we could use that coal as uh, as the basis for automating our iron smelting, for example. That could be somewhat useful. And you can, of course, also, uh, the chat is right here, you can breed your chickens together to make other chickens. Let me quickly check and see what cactus chickens can be made to breed for. The answer is nothing. <laughs> you can't breed the cactus chickens. Um, some chickens can be bred into other chickens. It looks like cactus chickens are not on that list. But I think, champ, that that is basically going to do it for this episode. I think what we'll do next time, we'll come back. We'll look at uh, getting started with the chicken mod. Uh, we'll look at getting resources from the chickens. Uh, we'll look at potentially setting up that cold chicken. Potentially, it does require a lot of coal to get the cold chicken, but I think it could be worth getting going uh, sooner rather than later. And of course, we'll look at beginning the strainer section of the quest book to get some lapis, to get some early end power, to get some item pipes, and then uh, to move on and potentially start with applied energistics sooner rather than later so that we don't have to keep relying on those uh, two horribly managed chests that we currently have. And of course, sooner rather than later, I do also want to get a, a better base up and running as well, because right now we're just still living in our little cactus fortress, which is getting a lot cramped. So uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up with this episode of Desertopolis there. <laughs>